good afternoon students in our this class we are taking another literary term that is allegory in simple terms allegory is a story within a story means we have one thing one narration it has its own meaning but parallel to it hidden indirectly it refers to something else which is more significant that is allegory so in simple terms it is a story within a story let's see how we can describe it so an allegory is a narrative in which the agent the action even the setting are contrived not only to make sense in themselves but also to signify a second correlated order of agents action or places sometimes events so there is one story it has its own meaning but another more significant story is indicated by that first story it may not be the whole story there may be a character from the story signify something else there may be an event there may be description of a place that signify something else there are two types of allegories historical and allegory of ideas the historical allegory or the political allegory is the allegory in which the characters and the action represents a historical character or a historical event so this representation itself is to allegorize for example there is a book by john dryden absalom and achitophel in this book the character david represents charles ii from history character absalom represents his son the duke of monmouth and the biblical plot allegorizes a political crisis in england of that time so the story is about absalom and achitophel and king david but the real implication is about an incident a political incident in that type of in that time of england the second type of allegory is the allegory of ideas in which the characters represent abstract concepts or ideas and the plot serves to communicate a doctrine or thesis or a moral both types of allegory may either be sustained throughout the work means the whole work the whole poem the whole story is allegorical or it may exist merely as an episode in the whole work the in most of the allegories there is the use of personification so personification of abstract ideas personification of historical characters uh, sorry personification of abstract ideas emotions feelings vices good qualities bad qualities are generally found in allegories let's have a look at them the central device in the typical allegory of ideas is the personification of abstract entities such as virtues vices guna guna states of mind and types of character in the more explicit allegories such references is specified by the character's name the characters are given the name of the qualities or virtues or vices as we may have characters like whose name is faithful another character whose name may be hopeful another character whose name may be dark or may be satan or may be despair like that even the naming of the places may also be allegorical the examples here are taken from pilgrim's progress written by john bunyan where we have the city of destruction we have the celestial city these are the places which represent the holy and sinful places
If we take examples of these allegories, the pilgrim's progress is a moral and religious allegory. There is a fairy queen written by Spencer. It is again both religious and historical and political allegory. Then there is another example of Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels. Perhaps you have read the book Gulliver's Travels. It is an allegorical satire against the philosophical and scientific pedantry. So allegories may work with different types of objects to get its goal. Now, there are some subcategories of allegories. For example, there may be a fable, there may be a parable. What are these? A fable is a short story which exemplifies a moral thesis or a principle of human behavior. It teaches us a lesson. Usually, in its conclusion, either the narrator or one of the characters states the moral in the form of an epigram. It is just like a maxim. Most common is the beast fables. Panchtantra, Hitopdes. These are the examples of fables. In English, the fables are famous fables are Aesop's fables. Early set of beast fables is attributed to Aesop. Aesop is a Greek slave of the 6th century BC. In modern times, in the 17th century, a Frenchman, Jean de la Fontaine, wrote a set of witty fables in verse, which are the classics of this literary kind. So, fable is an allegory in which generally the characters are animals. If the characters are animals, then it is a beast fable. There is a book, Animal Farm, written by George Orwell. And it is a novel and it is a satire on the political and the social condition of the age. But the story of the beast represents the condition of politi <coughs> political condition of our time. Then there is parable. A parable is a simple and short story to illustrate some point. And this point is mostly related to spirituality. So it is used in the religious discourse. It is a short narrative presented so as to stress the implicit but detailed analogy between its component parts and the thesis or lesson that the narrative is trying to bring home to us. The parable was one of Christ's favorite devices as a teacher. So it gives, it puts a situation and comparing the situation, the message is given. Another example is Another type of allegory is exemplum. That simply means example. So it is a story told as a particular instance of a general text of a sermon. It is also used in religious discourse. The device was extremely popular in the Middle Ages when extensive collections of exemplar were prepared for use by preachers, by preachers in church. So these are the broad, uh, the three categories of allegory, in all these forms, there is one story, but underground, underlying it is another story, which is the main purpose of the expression. For this class, uh, with this class, we have completed our literary terms and concepts. In our next class, we will take the literary history about the Anglo-Indian literature. Till then, thank you and goodbye.